Hello and welcome to the Mental Health Weekenders and our 10 week transformation special. I've got Spencer Matthews here fresh off the back of his own transformation and his trainer Sean Stafford. Um, thank you very much guys for joining us. Um, what I want to do to start with, I thought I'd start with some stats. Um, and what I've got here is nine kilos lost, body fat dropping from 12% to 5%, a squat five rep max that went from 70 kilos to 105 kilos, and a bench five rep max that went from 75 kilos to 100 kilos. And of course, very importantly, um, six abs gained. Um, so <laughs> obviously whatever you were doing, really worked um but what i think is really interesting is this you know this wasn't actually even the first time you guys have worked together or the first transformation you've done so spencer i was wondering if you could sort of take us back to the first time you've done something like this give a little bit of background and then how things were different this time around sure um i, th I think sean and i met seven years ago if, if you can believe yeah. it sean uh a city athletic in in the city uh, back when sean had what just one location uh and it was uh it was it was amazing it was great i think i was at a very different stage of my life we did a men's health uh um i think we ended up on the cover did we sean it was a celebrity six-pack challenge uh, wasn't it between uh, yeah. you and the uh, uh, you and some of the other made in chelsea guys yeah yeah and uh no, no so, but we ended up on the su subscription cover anyway so uh <laughs> we no, so, so, so no, we had a lot of fun and sean and i clicked instantly and we had uh we had a really good time. I was at a stage in my life where um, uh, I wasn't quite as kind of committed to, to things as I, as I am now. I wasn't quite as driven uh, as, I, as I am now. So the results this time, long story short, are much better. Also, I think just mm -hmm. being a bit older um, and having perhaps a bit more of a kind of manly frame. I was quite, you know, I was in my early 20s. Um, I was like early kind of mid 20s. Yeah. Uh, whereas in your early 30s, I feel like um, more of a man, I guess. And, uh, and I feel like it, uh, the whole thing was just slicker. It just worked better. And actually, I think that Sean will take you through kind of how it all worked. But it seemed simpler as well. It was more, yeah. just, just more dialed in, sharper. Um, you know, and in, we, your, in your own words, what, kind of, what were your goals going into this? Uh, just, just, just to, to absolutely uh, come out completely optimal, to come out as a complete athlete, and 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 completely change my um, view on lifting. I suppose I, I'm not much of a weightlifter. I, I do a lot of jujitsu. I do. I run. I spin. I cycle. I, I'm more of a cardio guy than than. Uh, but but uh, but actually, you know, with two kids um, yeah. uh, and a full time job, it's often quite hard to get out on the bike. So actually, I drifted into kind of dad territory. Uh, and I hadn't lifted weights properly in a while. I think there's the kind of vanity weightlifting where, you know, you pop into the gym and you get a bit of a pump on a couple of times mm. a week and that's it. But Sean, um, Sean's a bit of a genius when it comes to anatomy and physique and, and kind of how best to perform. We, we did four exercises essentially just, just over and over again with everything and, and then changed it, you know, as time went on. But the five rep max thing for me was, uh, was amazing i've actually given that we're, we're, we seem to be getting locked down all the time i've built a gym downstairs that enables me to do those four uh, uh those exact four exercises uh at home so i guess i don't okay. need to come in anymore sean <laughs> that's good it gives so, me some peace and quiet <laughs> to go to um across to you sean then i mean that's really interesting like so when spencer turns it up and asks this is what I want to do. What were your considerations in being able to help him to get there? Um, because also, interestingly, Spencer just mentioned the fact that um, he's more of a cardio guy, and specifically, this program that you put together for him was cardio free. So, talk a little bit about you know what what do you go through as a trainer when you're putting those things together, and also like dealing with Spencer specifically, like his lifestyle, his commitments, and all those kind of things. Yeah, well, it was it was actually quite a straightforward thing to do because. You know, I know that I know Spencer's commitments. I know that he he is quite time poor. He's quite a, a very busy guy, but also the change in his lifestyle and and the way he lives his life now compared to what he was doing sort of six seven years ago, it, it was night and day in terms of what I could ask him to do and and know that he would do it. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of the the actual training side of things, I knew that, that to keep Spencer interested, it had to be more than just coming into the gym and getting a pump on. 
it had to be more yeah. than that and it had to really appeal to his sort of competitive nature which is why I put in and, and structured his entire program around increasing his strength which is very objective it's numbers increasing yeah. his strength on key lifts all, all the time so his his entire mm -hmm. focus was every time he come in it was to lift more than he did the week before on these four big lifts and I think it just kept him really honest it kept him really focused and the reason why we took cardio out was because in order for us to get that fat loss result which was kind of if we sh if you're shooting for men's health you want to go in as lean as you can you want to look as good mm -hmm. because it's a very very visual thing but Absolutely. we had a conversation in the consultation which was what do you want to look like and he said i want to look lean but i want to look like an athlete i want to look i don't want to look skinny i want to look like i'm powerful yeah. i want to look like i do jiu-jitsu i want to look like i'm a man now rather than what we did seven years ago when i looked like a skinny kid and so that's why we, we took the cardio out. We just put in that really controlled calorie deficit with his eating. And then mm. we just did everything we could to try and retain as much muscle and focus on as much strength as we could during that whole 10, 12 week process. So, so, so weird, I mean, sorry, to, sorry to interject, Edward, but the weird thing about it is you look at, you look at the kind of before and after. The after actually has marginally less muscle. So like I've, gained, yeah. I've gained no muscle at all but we've just yeah. stripped kind of all the fat. And I think Sean said the way I understood it really well. Um, so I hope I get it right now is that Sean said, mm -hmm. we're essentially, we're essentially working your um, metabolism as hard, as hard as you can, as high as you can, whilst lifting as heavy as you can, whilst being in a calorie deficit. So mm -hmm. understandably it's not, it can be quite uncomfortable. Like, like you know, yeah. like, especially, yeah. especially if you're, um, you know, I don't mean to sound like the world's busiest man, but I'm in the office every day, you know, we're working all the time and it's, it's kind of like being on a calorie deficit kind of sucks. And then when you're lifting as, as much as you can, then that yeah. makes it suck more. And then when you have yeah. a love for jujitsu, for example, like I do, you keep that in as well. So there were days when you just feel really drained, like now post men's health where I feel like a pizza I'll eat a pizza and, and you know and you know I go down I'm significantly stronger than I was when I was with Sean and actually when lockdown ends I can't wait to get back in with Sean because we can sh throw some serious weight around now you know even around the kind of 1 110 level I've lifted heavier than that in my life so for me I was just like oh I really want to be lifting heavier but you can't when your body's deprived of calories and essentially every single day you're getting smaller and smaller and smaller so we managed to lift heavier but lose weight um but those big optimal lifts that i'm probably looking for now sean uh are, are kind of achievable now because 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 the diet's changed but, the, but then i think one one of the things that's interesting is that you, yes that you know working around a busy lifestyle is really important and therefore it was impressive that you guys were actually only really meeting up twice a week and then being sent away you obviously continue to do your jujitsu and also a, 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 what was referred to as sort of a more of a fun session to keep you interested on your own. But yeah. like, that's, that's impressive. So can you I, enjoyed those, I enjoyed those ones because they're the ones where I could put my own weights on. Sean, yeah. <laughs> Sean wouldn't let me try and get the big lifts that I wanted to because we referred yeah. to it as uh, time on the mats. Like in jiu-jitsu, the more time you spend on the mat, you, you, you progress through the belts. Sean would say it's this is time on the mat, you know, building the plates. Um, so I felt actually when Sean wasn't around, I could I could do what I want, which is obviously. Yeah. Uh, and also, yeah. and also when you when you're working with someone like Spencer, you, you I think if you try and impose a hundred percent my will, it doesn't work because he's a very independent guy. He needs to have an area where he can go and have some fun in the gym and, and do what he wants to do as well. And I think part of managing that whole environment is allowing that and, and allowing Spencer to get into the gym and express what he wants was, as, long as, he comes, as long as he comes back on the Monday and, and, and does, gets back on the plan. It was so much fun, by the way, and it's, it's so addictive, not necessarily the kind of really strict diet and the kind of having to be 5% body fat, you know, that's all, for me, slightly, it's a bit much, you know, but maintaining yeah, of course. A, a, an incredible physique is actually, once you, once you do the really hard work, it, you, you can do it right you know if you don't if you don't go out and, and burn the candle at both ends and if you don't 
eat just terrible food all the time, but you, you, you're focused and you train, you, you, can, you can hold on to what it is you've achieved. I've always been a yo-yo, mm -hmm. always. So, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go so hard until I'm in such good shape and then I'll be like, tick, and then I'll just go back to being, you know, just, just, just <laughs> terrible. And, and, and it's always been a wave, whereas now I think with sobriety and uh, increased responsibility with the kids and, and, and the business and stuff, it's, it's far easier to stay on top of your fitness goals. Or I, I, I find Absolutely. it far easier to stay on top of your fitness goals. I Which is nice because right. actually, it's, it's, I think there's a misconception where you look at some people, this is not me, but for example, when you look at Sean, you might assume that, oh, you know, they're, they're in such good shape, that, that must be their whole life. You know, whereas actually, I think when you, when you shake nine kilos of fat off your body, Sean said to me, you know, like, that's fat you've had on your body for so long, you know, and actually, mm. it's great. Now, now it's gone, you can keep it off quite easily if you're that way inclined. You know, if you want to stay in shape, I think you can, you can do it. You know, it's not uh... Well, so one thing that I think is really interesting is given this time of year, January, everyone's going to be um, thinking about trying to get back in shape or get in shape. Um, I, th I think there's often kind of a misconception of the transformation as like a, an unsustainable way to live and all that. And actually, yeah, well, yes, it is. That's, that's kind of the whole point is it, it's the, these, these, these programs are there to be used as a kickstart to get you into a position where you can then kick on and, and live live a healthier way of life. So I, yeah, I mean, I just Sean, if you've got clients coming to you and doing similar things to, to Spencer, is that kind of how you pitch the pitch the exercise? Yeah, I think I think from from a transformation point of view, I think you've got to be very very um, sort of focused on a slightly longer term outlook. You, I get people coming to me that say, "Oh, I want to drop." six you know i want to drop a stone in a month and you mm. just want to say to them that it's it'd be much much better to take that over a longer period of time integrate it slowly into your life because not if, if you take somebody's playbook for how they're living their life and rip it up and replace it with a new one that's that's only going to last them so long before they they want to go back to that old playbook so it's about trying mm. to sort of write different chapters in that playbook for them where they can make sort of changes that are going to be really positive and, and get them to where they want to be, but in a much more sustainable point of view. So if, if I said to Spencer, we're going to train six days a week and we're going to kill you and you're going to be on zero calories. And yeah. do you know what I mean? He, he probably wouldn't have stuck to it because it would have been unmanageable with his, with his outlook and his, and his responsibilities in his life. So it's about trying to get that optimization between doing the, the minimum required to get the results whilst mm. allowing them to still live a life that is enjoyable and sustainable over time. But actually I, I was, I was astounded at like, we were lifting for two hours a week, two hours a yeah. week. Like, yeah. like yeah. You know, who does not have two hours a week? Like, like every, exactly. everyone, I don't care how busy you are. Everybody has two hours a week to get into the gym and to do the correct thing. You know, if you are looking, to change your physique it is achievable and we did what you know 10 weeks 10 11 weeks 10 weeks i'd actually weirdly when we got the call to do the mental health thing sean and i just reignited our our yeah. training together anyway so it's precisely like it happened kind of almost for a reason it was very funny um yeah but essentially it's um i think people get turned off by the idea that they have to set aside all this time you know to to to, to get their fitness goals and that's just that's just not the case you know, of mm. course, you want to train every day, train every day. But like, if you don't have the time, big body transformations are achievable in two days a week, as we've just as we've just proved. But and I think uh, for, for a sorry, I was just going to say for a sort of a, a bit of a nerdy mental health audience, then it'd be good, Sean, to sort of explain how the principles in your workouts allowed that to happen. Because um, I know I, I think it's PHA. Is that what you, you guys were doing? So yeah, so we, we were using a technique called peripheral heart action, but I was saying we were only training for two hours a week, but then you were, I, I did kind of insist on the homework, which was another hour a week on your own steam. But it, I think probably the primary driver was the 168 hours a week of your eating, which completely, yeah. it, it, it was, it was yeah. that was the, that was the driver. All the training was, was trying to reshape and retain as much of your of your muscle as we could whilst having you on that calorie deficit um, the peripheral heart action training the pha training is just a really really effective way to not only get 
a lot of a lot of work done within that hour session but to really flood your body with a lot of hormones that are going to be very very conducive to you holding on to muscle and burning fat at the same time so it's just a it's just a technique that i've loved over the last 15 20 years training people not only does it make them feel amazing but it gets incredible results it was lovely. Can you just give an example of, of how it works, like it, how, how the work, workout would look, just to sort of explain it to people? <clears throat> so, so we started, we started off and it was a, always an upper body, lower body superset. So we would take a big compound exercise like bench press and superset it with uh, a trap bar deadlift. So sort of switching on huge muscle groups, you know, one upper body, one lower body. You would go and hit a max number or a max total on the first one a short rest period before going and hitting the second one. And that basically just throws your body into a complete state of uh, <laughs> bewilderment, as in your heart and, and the muscles are taking all the blood one way and then all of a sudden you're redirecting it another way. So your heart is working super hard. Um, the amount of lactic acid that's going through your blood uh, really raises, which in, in effect boosts your growth hormone output. And, you know, the fact that we're focusing on, on big compound lifts will make your testosterone optimized within the body. So it was really just trying to structure these upper body, lower body supersets in a way that we can really get as much work done with big numbers as we can in quite a short period of time. Also, we, we, we had to try and keep those sessions short because Spencer was on a calorie deficit for knock on just under three months. So energy, energy management is, is a super important aspect of doing a transformation if you've got an hour with somebody chances are they're going to be working hard for 40 minutes of it because after about that they're done like they, they just don't have the energy in their body um, i mean so let's let's go on to diet so i mean you guys were aiming for a 600 calorie deficit i'm pretty sure you guys said um and so spencer what was your diet like beforehand like that how what were you coming into this with i think it was a 700 calorie deficit uh but anyway my um <clears throat> my diet before um it wasn't it wasn't awful i would eat far too much so every time every time i would eat i'd probably eat twice as much as i need to eat um and i was a real kind of good fats guy so i was a real avocado guy real peanut not butter guy real not hummus real, not not friend. Friend. <laughs> apparently they're not my friends apparently these, friend. these, these, these high fat small small things are not my friend um and, and uh, no, so, so so I would have I would have a pretty healthy meal to be honest, but I would have a big dollop of hummus with it. Kind of, I'd go through a tub of hummus every single day. Um, I'd always have a, you know a bit of chocolate. Berg and I, 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 we are pretty active, so like you know, it's not like I went from being, you know, absolutely awful to, to into this. It's just you know my as I say, my, I would train um, BJJ Jiu Jitsu three times a week, so my fitness was all right, but you're not really engaging your, your kind of muscle group. You are, but you're not, you're not lifting weights. So you're not, you don't necessarily look uh, built or shredded, you know, from jujitsu. Uh, it's more of a technical sport. Uh, so essentially my, my body just probably didn't look as um, fine tuned as it might now, but my diet was essentially, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible, but obviously when you have two kids and you've got a, uh, the family and you've got you know vogue's brother lives with us you know and, and someone gets a pizza everyone has a pizza you know or like you come yeah. home from work and there's marouche all sat out or, or vogue's very kindly cooked you know spaghetti bolognese you're not just going to go oh actually i'll have a salad you know what i mean so you get you, you get stuck into whatever's there uh, and usually mm -hmm. it's delicious and you know I, I don't think even i was kind of terribly overweight before it's just if you take if you take my my weight, which was, I think about 84 kilos and I'm just under six foot, you know, it's, it's kind of, if you strip 11 kilos off that, you're going to be left with, well, you know, four or 5% body fat. Uh, but as far as my diet goes, I, don't, I didn't think it was that big of a ch change really, apart from the portion sizes. I do yeah. try to eat healthy. Portion sizes are really small. Uh, munch fit by, uh, sorry, a uh, fuel, which, which is driven by mon fuel by men's health was fantastic i'm actually i'm actually still on it i, I ordered another month yeah that's really good news i really yeah uh, that's cool yeah, still still on it uh probably not as militantly you know if one of the meals looks a bit and i you know i'd like a bit more than i'll do my hummus thing yeah. uh, you know but but actually it's uh at least you know that what you're eating is just super healthy encountered i'm i'm, I'm far less militant now with 
you know, calories and stuff. In fact, I've got no idea how many calories I'm eating a day. If I'm hungry, I'll just eat something. Uh, but typically it's healthy food. You know, I, I, you wouldn't really catch me having a kind of deep pan stuffed crust dominoes ever. Okay. Really. Um, but, uh, but no, it's, it's, it's great. I, I, I'm a big, since the kickstart with Sean for the second time, uh, I'm, I'm incredibly into it all now. You know, like I, I do a 45 minute pelly every morning. Um, and by the way, Sean, I was going to ask you, given that you're on the call, Sean's very hard to get hold of because he's also very busy. Um, given that you're on the call, if, um, if I'm eating normally and I've got all this energy and I'm doing a 45 minute peloton every morning, like pushing myself really hard, like before breakfast, is that going to impact or get in the way of gains if my energy levels are up and I'm lifting heavy? Um, as long as you're adequately fueling yourself. Um, so as long as you're replacing calories. No pun intended. Um, yeah, the um, the the, cal- the calorie burn from the the cycling and that the fitness gains should carry over into your strength gains as long as you're having enough uh, nutrition to, to fill the gaps. Oh, when you're doing that as well, yeah, you'll be fine. I'm a whooper. Don't yeah, you know. so oh, that means okay. how are you how are you finding it? It's so addictive. I've never cared about anything as much as, as the data that this whoop gives me. I, I've only had it for about a week, but it's like. It's crazy mm. how accurate it is. I think it's amazing. I'm mm-hmm. like, this isn't a job. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. It's, it's just like, but it, it's, it's mad. Like, it, it tells you your, I'm sure you know what a whoop is anyway, but essentially, it, as long as you're not overreaching on the whoop, should be fine, right? Yeah. Like, it does say like, oh, your strain level is dangerously high today. Yeah. You're going to struggle to recover from this. So maybe, you know, as long as that's saying, yeah, go for it. You, you're all good, yeah? So this, this is, this is a really interesting thing about strain work and recovery that it's just a balancing act. So as long as you're, if you're working more and you're increasing your strain or the stress or the adaptive stress on your body, as long as you're giving your body what it needs to recover, i.e. rest, nutrition, you can increase that workload exponentially as long as it's matched and you're getting that, that balance between work and recovery. So something like a, a whoop or you know, I know that Whoop is really good. Um, that just helps you keep a, a really objective view on it. Two, two days ago, no, I tried. Yeah, you don't burn it. Two days ago, I literally tr- just tried to like break the Whoop to see like how, how far I could get it. And I got Why it, does that not surprise me? I got, <laughs> I, got it, I got it to a strain level of like 19.9 for the day. I think like 20.7 is like first in the world. Like on, you can't go any higher than like 20.9. 20. I, I was at 19.9. And literally, it literally said, like, you've overreached by, like, you will need 13 hours of sleep to recover from this. <laughs> and then, like, then I slept for, like, I slept for, like, seven, six hours, seven hours. And the following day, I just, like, I literally, like, I, I'll, I'll describe it as kind of like a physical meltdown. I literally, I literally just, like, I couldn't, I couldn't operate properly. Had to have a nap. I've never napped. I don't nap. <laughs> I had, to, I had to sit down and go to sleep for an hour and a half. And then the rest of my day was just like, so the root, the whoop does know what it's doing. It is correct. Good. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's great tech. Just to, just to take it back to the, the diet. Um, Sean, obviously Spencer's already mentioned he was on the, using men's health fuel meal boxes, which is great. Yeah. And that was obviously incredibly helpful. I imagine when you're talking about calorie deficit. So talk about a little bit about that, but then also he was, it wasn't all offered up. Um, no. in boxes so there were there were principles that Spencer was having to use elsewhere throughout the week so how what was he what did you tell him and, and what were the tips that he was using throughout the week to to stick to that obviously very restrictive diet yeah I think I think one of the really important things with this transformation was that we wanted it to be you know almost a, a blueprint for the everyday bloke that they could do it so it's not one of these things where you take someone and take remove them from their environment and throw them into a a setting where everything is, is provided for them. You know, the training six times a week, they're having all their food provided for them. Mm. We wanted to give like a really realistic representation of what could be achieved by a dad with two kids, full-time job, you know, exactly. having, yeah. having a normal life. So when we did the, the, the fuel by men's health boxes, we, we made sure that they were varied in terms of the, the content. So it was a very, a very varied and balanced diet but with the primary goal of providing enough protein, so hitting two grams of protein per kilo body weight a day and with a 600 to 650 calorie deficit, which is, which is more than I would usually go for, but I kind of 
for the three or four days he was on fuel, I put that deficit a little bit higher just to give him a bit more flexibility yeah. when he was working on his own. And then when he was on his own, it was really a case of he, he eats very healthily. He eats really good food he may, and he makes good food choices. But it was, and he mentioned it earlier, all about portion control. It was about shrinking down. So if he was eating off a dinner plate, eat off a side plate. So just really reduce that portion size down. And we talked about it earlier when things are his friend and not his friend. Mm-hmm. But there are things like, Spencer's a big fiend for like super high fat food. Like he'll love hummus, he'll love avocado, love salmon, love eggs, love peanut butter. Yeah. And it's uh, trying to get this across it's to him. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 healthy, it's healthy food, but it's very, very calorie dense. Nuts. Yeah, nuts. nuts. It's very calorie dense. So it will give him a lot of calories for not much Food. space in his stomach <laughs> so it's just trying to educate him and, and get him picking and making better food choices around things that are maybe slightly less nutritionally dense but more fibrous and and will keep him fuller for longer without that whack of huge calories so i think the main thing was getting his water levels up and also making sure that he's just eating good food but less of it when it got yeah, really hard when it got there really was one. There was one moment. I, I think Spencer, you mentioned that you had actually finished your men's, three of your four men's health, men's health boxes by like eleven a.m. and were yeah. sort of stuck for the rest of the day. And Sean didn't actually give any ground at all, really. No, no, no. I, I went to the office one day, and it was and it was just like it was a dark, gloomy day. Uh, and essentially, uh, yeah, it was just starving. And like by starving, I mean like I went to sleep starving, and I woke up starving and I, I, I literally i had to get straight to the office i put i put, I put my four boxes because i was going to be there till about i don't know five six and i would always finish eating by then because i only have four boxes so so i take so i take the uh yeah I, I took them all and put them in the fridge and yeah i nailed four of them i nailed three of them by i think it was proper mid-morning it was maybe 10 30. and uh, you realize you've got like a really long time before you go to bed on that lowly box that's left and also you've probably left the box that you're least keen on because you're so hungry you let you leave the kind of worst till last because you think that by by eating the others you'll you'll be you'll be all right with it but but no no that was a that was a rubbish day but then again we've got we've got um we've got uh diet di- diet coke and coke zero is your friend apparently and that's not that not that it's healthy but it's it's definitely a friend when you're trying to cut calories zero calories and it fills you up a bit uh and watermelon uh, watermelon fingers watermelon fingers and celery friend no yeah. hummus though no that's, hummus. Not, that's no good um so one in addition to the diet one of the things that will have made this easier is that you're sober now and you know in january when people are doing transformations that's also a lot of the time when people are going to be giving up booze i mean so how well, I suppose actually it'd be more interesting to get a bit of background into the decisions, into making the decision to go sober and then sort of how that has impacted your life overall in, at work, but now specifically what you noticed during your training as well. I, I just used to drink too much. You know, I, th- I think I've always lived in, in cities and, and uh, uh, always had a bit of an appetite for, for, you know, for fun and going out and, and my social life was incredibly rife and, uh, it's pretty normal uh, in, in, in the UK in particular and the kind of, well, especially in the circles that I was hanging around in, I suppose, in the jobs that I had as a city broker and, and a forward foreign exchange trader, you know, we, we would drink. We would be fairly regular to have a beer at lunch or whatever. So over the years, I just felt like I kind of drank quite a lot. I felt like it was kind of holding me back from my full potential, I suppose. Uh, and it got to the stage where, you know, the, the glass of wine at night or with my evening meal would turn into half a bottle or a bottle and it was you know pretty regular i'd never go well i would but from time to time really drink to excess but it was more of just like a steady you know steady intake of alcohol um that great television presenter did a uh did a documentary about alcoholism sorry i can't his name's just escaped me but, but essentially labeling himself a massive alcoholic but he never realized it because he just drank mm. steadily kind of you know all the time type thing he was never falling over drunk or you know, never losing his car keys or not being able to get the key in the lock or anything like that, but just, you know, just constantly a little bit inebriated, I suppose. And that was kind of me. And I just thought it would be nice to to knock it on the head um, and see what, what, what it would be like without it. You know, I was reading a bit about 
sober curiosity and uh, and you know the, this 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 life that you can lead without alcohol and how life's so much better. And I thought, well, I'll give it a go. And uh, and yeah, I mean, I've I've never looked back. I I personally believe that moderation is the key. You know, like I think if you're able to control your alcohol, having a few drinks at the weekend, are absolutely fine. You know, no one's saying like you know go sober. Or alcohol's terrible. We as a company definitely don't. Um, you know, we're, we're there as an option uh, to, you know, in a, a, as an alternative or replacement or an option to, to, to full strength alcohol. You know, if you feel like a drink, but you don't want the alcohol, then we're there as, as an option. We're not trying to replace alcohol. We're there to and we, of course, is your clean co. Clean co yeah, clean, yeah, clean co. Uh, we, sell, we sell gin and rum. And we have a vodka coming out. We're doing a tequila for the U.S., uh, and a number of ready to drinks and, and stuff and it's, it's, it's all growing quite quickly it's very exciting um, but yeah we, we're certainly not anti-alcohol I even see myself probably down the line living more of a, mo a life of moderation I just needed a good break I think for, from the bad habits that I'd formed um, but I'm certainly not anti-alcohol you know on on New Year's Eve you know this year next year we'll have a glass of champagne with my mum or something I, I really don't know I really don't know but for, for me it was so regular before and actually, when you take a nice big break, I haven't drank alcohol in two and a half years. If you take a lovely big break from it, you begin to realize that actually, it makes you, like, well, in my particular, it makes me feel awful. I don't really get much out of it. I'm a very animated social person anyway. You know, I, really, I really kind of, it didn't really benefit me to be drunk at any time. Um, so, so I kind of just, and a lot has changed, you know, but just my, my appetite for, Hard work has increased. Uh, my my training is better. I think I think it's very hard to draw any negatives from being sober. Uh, well, one of the things that I find really interesting, having spoken to you before, is um, you said that in this country, if you decide to work out every day, it's a positive. It's seen as a positive yeah. thing. If you decide to give up drinking, which is undeniably healthy, it's yeah. seen as a bit of a weirdo. So, how you know? How did you navigate that? And and also, I mean, obviously, Cleanco is kind of set up in response to that of making yeah. sure that there are options out there. But you know, going out and to I think, see friends I think, and not having having drink in your hand is a, is something that people struggle with. I think we're pretty on trend, to be honest with it. I, th I think in in two three years, the world will be a very different place with that. It will suddenly be like the smoking thing, where you know, obviously, everyone accepts that some people smoke, but you know, it used to be a far more widely accepted thing to be smoking all the time, everywhere. Uh, whereas now, you know, if you're constantly lighting up a cigarette, you know, it's considered to be very unhealthy. Whereas before, it was probably considered to be normal. Um, I think alcohol probably will drift drift into that category. I think social drinking is absolutely fine, as we've said. Um, but essentially, yeah, the, the for a start, if if, if you want to go sober and, you, and you're kind of giving it a break, uh, and your mates are giving you a hard time about it, then I, I'd probably question who you're hanging out who you're hanging out with. Uh, it's undeniably a good thing to do. Uh, you know, if you do feel like alcohol is getting in the way of anything, or it's affecting your decisions, or perhaps you're making you know, mistakes that you wouldn't ordinarily mistake, just just stop drinking for a week or a couple of weeks, just see what it does for you. You might absolutely love it, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a strange one. There is a stigma surrounding sobriety that it could be a bit boring, but I think we as a company, Cleanco, are definitely looking to change that. We're looking to add uh, a tone of voice and a kind of a bit of humour to, to this very serious sobriety market um and i think it's um you know it's, it's not for everyone but in my humble opinion if you if you go sober for a month you're going to feel a million bucks you're going to feel better and then you might question you know why you're drinking in the first place um so to sort of draw towards a close i think if we're, we're talking about sort of sticking to something which is sobriety but also you know a t 10 weeks of the transformation is a long old time and i think when people um, embark on a transformation in January are also always in the position where they'll sort of go all in for two weeks, wreck themselves, feel awful, go, oh, I'm going to throw in the towel straight away. Um, so I'm wondering if just to sort of round things up, both of you can work, kind of make some suggestions on motivation and, and maybe playing, taking it slower. I don't, I don't know, like, Sean, from your opinion as a trainer, what advice do you have to guys to, to make these things stick and make, make, make ensure they're successful. Yeah, I, I kind of touched on it earlier and it's, um, it's about not ripping up your playbook for life. So you, you, know, you, you are a function of your habits and your routines. So 
usually when people come in and they do these, you know, one month transformations, they, they change everything and, and therefore it, it, it really clashes with their own existence. So it's, it's really important to, to highlight some areas where you can, you can make some positive changes and that can actually have an impact on the results that you want to get, but in a way that is not going to take over your old way of life. And it's really important to be able to do it in a way that is sustainable and achievable because we're talking about motivation. And one of the most demotivating things is setting yourself a target, whether it's realistic or not, and then failing to hit that target. So these people that come in and they say, I'm going to train five days a week. And then they realize that they can only actually train three days a week because they're too sore or they're too busy or whatever. And therefore they feel that they have failed because they've not hit the drastically unrealistic target that they've set themselves. So I think it's about being real realistic with what you can commit to and to really take a much longer term outlook. Something like six weeks is the minimum amount of time that I would ever suggest somebody doing a, a transformation or a lifestyle overhaul mm -hmm. because that and that and that can give you the opportunity to make two or three changes in the first three weeks get them embedded into your life so that they become routine this so, so they become had it, habits and then tweak tweak some other ones for the last three weeks and it's one of those things where something like committing to if you're exercising one time a week currently committing to doing two for two weeks yeah. and then if you can if you can hit that target and if you can integrate that into your life for the next two weeks try three mm. and then if you can hit that and it's sustainable then you can look at maybe removing alcohol for the last two weeks or you know doing some more holistic stuff or trying to drink more water that's something that i've you know I've, with spencer will know this well is uh, it's one of those things where something like we you know we, we had a battle about drinking water and, and optimizing hydration which is such an a there's so much research out there about if you're dehydrated the impact it has on cognitive function on athletic performance and it's such an easy win it's such low-hanging fruit you know simple calculation work out how much water you need to be drinking drink it yeah and, then when, and when do you know what i mean when you've hit that target you will feel so much better. Yeah. So I think, I think when we're looking at transformations in January, it's about trying not to rip up everything you're currently doing, set real, real realistic targets and, and go for the low hanging fruit first. Mm -hmm. And uh, Spencer, beyond appearing in men's health, what were the biggest motivating factors that sort of kept you going? I know you guys sort of like gamified the workouts to sort of make sure that you were hitting your targets all the time, but like what, what was it that really kept you going and, and helped to motivate you? I think you can you can see it as a target, you know, like, oh, I need to look this way for a photo in men's health. But every time we trained, we got better. And mm -hmm. for me, being optimal has become uh, addictive is the wrong word, but it's something I, I do care about. I want to be the best businessman I can be. I want to be the best husband I can be. I want to be in the best shape I can be. I, you know, it's like I've kind of replaced like, you know, drinking and going out and trying to be loud and like the funniest and the coolest person in the room with just, you know, keeping to myself a bit more and just trying to be better. Um, and obviously for me, the, the, these kind of this big transformation thing was never, was never just going to be, for me, it was a runway into a better, better fitness regime. And, 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 and I really, really learned loads. I learned every time I was with Sean, I learned something about how, your body works and everyone has these opinions about you know what you should and shouldn't do or bulking versus shredding or what comes first and all you know all this stuff and it's like you know for me what we did worked i now know what i need to do to kind of you know hold on to the strength that i've created and that i want to keep um i, I quite like my new physique so i'll probably do my best to, to keep yeah. it so, so it's kind of like all these things are building blocks, you know, like, you know, you, you grow your company, you build your company, you grow your body, you build your mind, you know, it all sounds a bit la -di da but for me, if you can, if you can be better and operate at a higher level, then why wouldn't you? Um, so I learned an awful lot from Sean. For me, this will definitely carry on. Weightlifting was not part of my regime. It definitely will be now. You know, I will lift weights, you know, two or three times a week for the foreseeable future. Um, you know, and it's, uh, 
you know, changing my life would be a, a strange way of looking at it, but you know, in a, in a weird way, it kind of has. I understand my diet better. I understand my body better. I know what I'm able to do. I know how hard I can push myself and I know how it makes me feel. Like I feel great. I feel brilliant all the time. And that's, that's something that I want to harness and control and keep. I've, I spent years feeling awful, like, like, you know, like just never quite like spent years drinking, spent years smoking, you know, going out, you know, and it's just, it's just, it's time wasted and it's, it's not productive. And now, you know, with the help of men's health and Sean in particular, you know, I feel like I've grown to be uh, a better athlete and probably a better person from all of it. And I realize it's all very deep, but it's like, I do try and build on, on, on everything I do all the time. So, you know, that's, this was part of the build. I, th I think that's really inspirational and I think you know that's exactly what people want and need to hear at this time of year when they want to go and achieve those things so yeah you know, I will say if you want all the details of Spencer and Sean's workouts and diet then go and get the magazine this month um, and I appreciate the, the the time guys and it's um and congratulations Spencer on doing such a good job um, and thank you everyone for watching um, I hope you learned some stuff and I hope you guys all have a very productive January transforming your bodies. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Thanks. For Thanks, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah.